Good morning. Happy Tuesday, you guys. It's just now noon, Central Standard Time. It's 10 o'clock here in Portland, Oregon. And I'm going to wait just a bit to see if anyone wants to come on and see what I'm doing next. My name is Mary Corrado. I have a business called Mary Corrado Designs here in Portland, Oregon. I do interiors and I also do beautiful painted finishes through Amy Howard. So I'm so excited today to be here for Amy Howard and to rehab a dining table. So, you know, dining rooms are those kind of, a lot of people don't have them anymore, but dining rooms are those places that are um, really kind of special. I know people don't use them a lot, but they can be a room where you can actually do really kind of whatever you want in it because it is like the place where friends gather, where family gathers for special occasions. And um, so today I am redoing, on a budget, I am redoing a dining table. Now I found this table and it's kind of a refectory table. It has, I love the bones to it. It is um, such a cool old look. It has the wrought iron in the center as the brace. It has those really cool shaped legs. But I have to tell you, I picked this up and honestly, it was in really bad shape. And I thought, oh, I'm changing my gears. I thought I was gonna probably just do a nice refinish on the, um, use a you know vintage wood, better with age, and use a white um, vintage wood ceruzing wax on the whole thing. Well, what happened was the legs were in such bad shape that really, and it was just veneer, so the sides wouldn't have worked anyway on the side of the legs. So what I did was I ended up doing a paint finish on the legs and the apron, and I refinished the top with the Better With Age. So it's a little bit of a two-step process today, but um, I'm gonna show you what I came up with. Now here is what I wanted for the legs and the apron. I wanted a very white washed, almost not really concrete, but I just really wanted this to look kind of old and just really simple and pretty. And when I did the top, it's stunning. I, had, I can't wait to show you, but this is more the color it turned out. Now, if this were oak, it would have turned out like, let me just show you my little sample. If this were oak, this is what the ceruzing wax will do once you use a better with age on your oak. Look at how dark and spectacular that is. It is just fabulous. This turned out to be a light color. That's why I wanted to keep a really light base like this. This wood that I use the better with age on has like zero uh, graining in it. So this is not a good example. This is only just for color. So I'm going to show you how to get started with the Better With Age on your piece that you have to use. You have to start with raw wood. You have to sand it completely off. Otherwise, it will not soak in over the stain or the, um, the uh, like varnish. So what this is, this is a piece of oak. It will turn dark but it is perfectly raw. So let me turn the camera down. I'm gonna show you how to get started with this and then we'll, I'll show you the painted part, okay? So let's get the camera down. I wanna make sure you all can see well this time. Okay, I think you can see. So I use gloves and we're gonna use Better With Age Hopefully you can see that, there you go. And we're going to use a chip brush. Now this vintage wood is a solution that actually soaks into your wood. It is not, it doesn't sit on top of it, it soaks in and it, because of the tannins in your wood, it will create, the more tannin, the darker it is. So I'm not sure what kind of wood was on my tabletop. I'm thinking maybe walnut, but I did think walnut had more tannins than that, but I'm not quite sure. So here's, here's what the Better With Age looks like. You just wanna give it a stir because there are like particles at the bottom. 
and we're just going to saturate our brush and then we saturate the wood. And it doesn't take long once this dries. See, you can already see how it's turning really dark. I mean, this is has a lot of tannins in it. But with the magic of TV, I'm going to show you. This is what it dries to. So now, because I want to have time to be able to show everything. So I'm not going to worry about the wet side. And I'm going to show you how we apply the ceruzing wax. And what you do, just give a generous amount right on the piece. And I always use 4 aught steel wool. And you're going to want to rub this against the grain to get the wax right into the grain. And then you're going to want to rub it with the grain. But that's the beauty of it is rubbing it against the grain. And this has such beautiful grain that you can already see that it's working. And just keep using the steel wool on it because it will clean it and kind of buff it. The wool, the steel wool just kind of gives us this really beautiful sheen. Look at how easy that is. That's all it takes. Gorgeous. Okay, so that's how I did my top. Okay, now that's out of the way. Moving on, cleaning this off. I used cracked gesso and milk paint and waxes and antiquing glaze. So this was a plain raw piece of wood that I painted with Amy Howard's One Step Bauhaus Buff. That's always your base. You always want to use a one step paint as your base for a milk paint so that it has something to actually adhere to. So to save time, I have already painted this. We're going to move on to the next step. The next step is cracked gesso. Now I've already mixed the cracked gesso. You use, uh, it says one-to-one. -one. I go a little thicker than one-to-one -one water and cracked gesso. You just want it to have a little bit of body to it so that when you paint it on, it actually will be a little bit of a surface, a little bit of a texture. Now I've gotten rid of most of the foam, just skim the foam off. And you'll notice also, once you use a little tap water, it turns kind of pink. Don't worry about that. It um, will dry white and it dries hard and white. So what we do is we take a chip brush and we just paint it on. And it dries, it dries probably within an hour but I'm gonna use a blow dryer and just make sure it's covering 100% coverage. You want 100% coverage on your uh, one-step paint also. So here we have this cracked gesso. I'm gonna, sorry, but I'm going to use my blow dryer. It's already drying up really well. Now, if you're doing this at home, the best thing you can do actually is to maybe do your one step paint and your cracked gesso in the same day. Let your one step paint, for, paint dry for a couple of hours then you can apply your cracked gesso, and I would just let that sit overnight. You want it to make sure it's nice and dry and hardened. Okay. 
Okay. So after you do the gesso, sometimes it can be really rough and have a lot of um, kind of peaks and valleys that are kind of rough. So just kind of feel it. Use your um, fine, like 320 sandpaper if you need to, and give it a good sanding. This actually doesn't feel too bad, so I'm just going to move on. But do sand in between if you've got a lot of kind of pokey things. From here, we are going to use... I used the Scandinavian Gray Milk Paint, and I loved the color. It's a really light, beautiful gray. And so you just use one-to-one. -one. So I'm just going to mix this one up. You can mix it into kind of a paste first. I probably went a little heavy on the water, but that's okay. It's, it's just what I need. And you want to make sure that you're really mixing this because this has granules in it that uh, if you mix the night before, you're going to have better luck because the granules will have dissolved. Okay, this is a little thick, so now we're going to add some more water. This is actually really a watery paint, and don't be surprised that it is so watery. Just get it all mixed, and you want to go back as you're working with it. Sorry, I think I'm bumping the camera, so I think it's getting shaky. Um, as you work with this, you always want to continue to re-agitate the paint because it settles very quickly, and it separates, and all the paint, all the particles go to the bottom and that's what you, you really need those particles mixed in with the water. So there you go. Let's keep it nice and thin and stirred. And again, with a chip brush, get it all incorporated. And we're going to just, oh, I got some water on there. I'm going to scoop that down. Paint this on. You don't want to overwork it since you've got the cracked gesso underneath, but give this a nice coat. And you'll notice with milk paint, it really has kind of a drag to it. Um, it doesn't go on the way regular paint does. So just kind of test it on some testers because you're going to get the feel for it um, after you've tried it a little bit. But... It definitely kind of drags because it almost like the gesso is, which it is, absorbing the moisture and then you're left with kind of a dry feeling. So this, you will see, is the Scandinavian Gray. This is the color it will dry back down to. When you mix with water, it goes darker. So once again, blow dryer. When I dry it, when I'm working with the milk paint and the cracked gesso, it's better to use a blow dryer than a heat gun, only because the cracked gesso will crack a little bit harder and start to flake off with a, too much heat on it. So depending on how flaky you want it, I, do, I don't want this, I didn't really want this to be too flaky and coming off as much as I wanted like a, just a nice kind of a thick textured look onto my piece. So starting to dry. Thank you for your patience. I know this is a little boring, but it is kind of fun to see it dry down back to its original color. So you'll be doing your milk pink probably the second day and do give this some time to dry. I'm doing two milk paint colors, one on top of each other. So we do want this to be dry before I add the next. So 
Okay, hurry, hurry, hurry. Okay, except for these little areas, I'm gonna continue on the center. Now, when I did this, I liked it, but I wasn't quite the right color. With the color of the wood that I did, it had a lot of um, warm tones to it. And so what I did was I also grabbed Pompeii Gray, which is just a warmer, see that kind of warmer, creamy gray color? So I wanted to add another dimension to this finish. And so what I did was added this and I added it actually with a sponge. And so let me just show you kind of how I did it. I wanted it covered everywhere, but I also wanted it to have a little tiny bit of dimension with the back, the background. Since this was a little bit of a, like I keep saying concrete, but a little bit of a concrete look, um, I didn't mind that it showed through like that. And another thing you might notice when this dries, when you mix your milk paint and you don't let it sit, some of these little tiny granules show up darker in your paint, which honestly I liked. And so I did it on purpose so that they would show. And let's see if I can show you what I'm talking about. Since it doesn't always dissolve, sometimes you get these little, I wanna make sure this is hot get these little tiny granules. And I'll hold this up close to the camera after this round. See how it's a little mottled? I'm loving that. Now, if you guys have any questions, please, please send them to me. I can't see them right now. I will absolutely answer any questions you have. And I would love to help you with the process any, any way I can. Okay, so here, can you see this okay? It's hard for me to tell with this camera, but do you see how this is now looking a little more modeled? Maybe you can see a little tiny bit of that. Well, you can see kind of here, it's already flaked a bit, which is great. That's totally fine. Okay, now at this point, I take my sponge and I need to get it wet. And we're going to be using antiquing glaze. And something else I did with this antiquing glaze I'm going to show you is I like to speckle, like fly speck my pieces. And you can do that with the antiquing glaze. And it's super, super subtle in the background. But yet, it still kind of shows up. It just gives a little more texture to your piece. So what I do... You can take a brush, or I take a toothbrush, and I just add, maybe I'll do, I should probably do a brush. Let me see. Oh no, there they're showing up. You have some big spots and some lots of little spots, but I love this because it does actually just give a little extra, kind of a light tan color in there. Okay, so now I have my seawool sponge, dip it into the antiquing glaze, and I, I get everything kind of wet. But with this finish, I didn't, because I did kind of all this texture to it, 
I didn't do the antique and glaze to really pull too much off. I really didn't want to pull too much off. Honestly, I wanted all this different tone in here. And the antique and glaze just warms it up. So let's dry this. So play with, when you're painting and making textures and making finishes and all, play with what you have. It doesn't have to be exactly the same technique every time. If you feel that you want to create a slightly different look, you can do that. Do that with your brushes, do that with your antiquing glaze. I even, can. you can even go in and fly spec this with, I used a little bit of gray, um, uh, stain. I made it about half strength and I used my toothbrush and I went like this all over it again. And I had little dark specks in there in between the lighter and the darker color. So it just added a slightly bit more texture. Okay. Starting to flake, which is fine. It will flake more because we're kind of rushing the drying a little bit. But now we're to this point. It's all very, very subtle. As you can see, can you see? Yeah, it's all very subtle. And now we're going to go into our light wax, dark wax, and a little bit of Dust of Ages. Okay, so we, of course, you know the light and the dark wax. I think you know the dust of ages by now. And get my brushes for all of these. Do a quick waxing. Always offload. I've got some cardboard over here. This too gives it a beautiful, warm finish. Which I love. And it brings out extra depth to the milk paint. So there's your light wax. You don't have to go crazy with it. Just give it an overall to protect all of the painted surface. Get that a little bit dry. See if I can open my dark wax, okay. We need to fan this a little tiny bit. And I wanna have time to show you the table and stuff. It's so pretty. Okay, let's do a quick dark wax. Always offload. Now start in the corners and really work the corners and the edges and wherever else this would come in contact with fingers or dirt or that kind of stuff. And then I did do just a tiny here and there. Okay, dark wax. starting to flake because honestly this process I'm not giving it you know the hours and the time that it really takes to let things kind of settle in and dry properly and cure but there's that and then finally we have the dust of ages I did not do a ton of dust on this piece I did it mostly where there was um maybe a seam or in in the leg where maybe there would be some dust from all this years of sitting in the barn and that kind of stuff. So did a little bit of dust. Get your rag, dust it off, which I don't have a rag in front of me. I forgot that. Okay. I'm going to use my hand for now. Always use a rag, but you can work it in with your hand too. Okay. So here is kind of the look I was going for. This, I have to say, is a little darker than I did, but now I'm going to show you the table itself. And 
get this out of the way. I'm going to turn my camera. Okay, I'm taking this off. I want you to see. Can you see the top? Which the grain is absolutely gorgeous. I just think this table that really honestly was ready for the garbage is so fabulous. Look at those beautiful wrought iron stretchers. See how I did the finish? It's textured. It's fresh. This, I just love this. This could go into a contemporary space, get some beautiful upholstered linen chairs. This could go into a really casual farmhouse. This could go into a really traditional. I just love it. So there you have it. That is my latest project, and I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's always really rushed, but this was this just took a lot of elbow grease. Otherwise, it was so fun to see it transformed from what it was to what it is now. I love it. It's absolutely gorgeous. So enjoy. Have fun doing yours, and we'll see you on another Tuesday. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye, guys.